Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to put a quick video up. I'm not going to ramble too long here, but I'm going to give you a little story. And you can choose to believe it or you can choose not to. You can choose to chalk it up to something with science or whatever that you'd want to choose to do with it. And that's fine too, but we know it's real. I know it's real. Uh, almost 50 years ago today, my dad died. And uh, next year, he will had been dead as long as he lived. He died at 47 years old, unexpectedly and with a very quick illness. Uh, those of you that know me know I still hurt so deeply over that. Of course, that day, I hurt more. It was, there was more trauma with it for me. Um, but I still hurt every day, and not a day goes by that I don't miss my dad. And I give, I, I've told you this in, in past stories that Joe was a blessing to me from God and an answer to all my prayers that Basically, I got my dad back with Joe uh, when Joe was born, and especially as he's turning into a young adult now, uh, I got my dad back. And uh, I really don't expect many of you to understand that, and that's fine. But wanted to tell you a little story about James Van Allen, my daddy. Uh, After he died, I, I was still very much a young kid. Uh, one of my sisters was 16. Uh, my wife, I mean, my mom was in her 40s. I can't really recollect the exact age she was. And my sister was 19 and had just had a baby herself. She was getting married and... Uh, progressing with her life as an adult so I was the youngest but after dad died a strange thing happened for three days and I was the first one um, I had a mini bike um, and I went out back in the backyard to spray it off with a garden hose or as we say down south in the US a hose pipe and I was spraying the mini bike off getting mud off of it and uh, just for something to do because of course we were all devastated and I look up and there's my dad standing there and uh, so I saw him the next day um, now, meanwhile, my mom's really worried that I saw my dad. And psychologically, she's like, oh, my God, what is going on? What is happening? But it was later in that day or the following morning, uh, my recollection with my oldest sister, Bev, uh, we called her Bev. Her name's Beverly, was Beverly. She's passed away several years ago. Um but Beverly came in and she saw him in her house. And then my mother is really freaking. Now, uh, my dad come from a highly successful professional family. And the brother she decided to call uh, was a former dean of science at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and was the sitting head administrator for the Presbyterian Hospital in Charlotte. I uh, see so quite a scientific background and public health background uh, with who she chose to call. And she called my uncle and she said, I don't know what is happening here, what I need to do, do I need to see about getting Beverly and 
Jig. That was my nickname at the time. She, do I need to take them somewhere to talk to somebody? Now, this was day three, actually, in the morning of day three. And my uncle, the science dean, the uh, doctor of public health, um, is a doctor. And uh, he said, no, Bonnie, that was my mother's name. He said, no, Bonnie, you, you don't do one thing to them kids except believe them because I just saw Jim walk out the back door to our mother's home and he stopped and paused and turned around, stuck his hand up and turned to walk and vaguely disappeared. He's gone. He's letting us know he's fine. Uh, some way, somehow, God is letting us know he's just fine. And I just figured I would share that story because a lot of times uh, when loved ones pass, there's something like that that happens. And uh, we... God, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and we don't know exactly what those ways are. They would not be a mystery to us. So, a lot of people discount these things, but uh, the one who would have discounted it the most, the one who really was not a believer, became a believer just like that. The one that was Mr. Science. And, uh, so I just figured I'd share that little story. So my I'm older than my dad now, which is very uh, something I think about quite frequently. And uh, this is why Joe and I have such a special relationship. He, on a daily basis, he gets to hear my love for my dad, his grandpa, and. Uh, it makes Joe appreciate his love for me and my love for him better. So I highly doubt if my dad were living today of the closeness of us, that it would be the same. Uh, maybe it would, but I want to tell all this story to all the dads and the sons out there. Appreciate every single second that you have. Uh, Treat it as the per the precious commodity it is because uh, we never know just in the blink of an eye New York minute anything can happen and uh, so just appreciate dads and sons appreciate one another Joe and I seldom get in an argument we do get on each other's nerves quite frequently and daily uh, and uh, <laughs> nothing major Nothing major at all between he and I. Uh, and I'm very thankful to the Lord for that. So uh, just wanted to give this little story out, tell some folks about it, and uh, just to tell all the fathers and sons out there, appreciate each other. There's none more special than the bond between a father and a son. None more special. I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen Mother's, the Father's Day come roll around, and men can't leave women alone. They, To all you mamas out there, a happy Father's Day to you, because you do both jobs now. A man can't be a mother, and a father can't be a uh, a man, yeah, a man can't be a mother and vice versa. A woman can't be a father. Uh, there's two totally different things there. They're separate. They're God-given. They're God-allowed. And they're God-taken. And uh, we've got to quit distorting and weakening <coughs> and feminizing the roles between dads and sons. So, I just wanted to say that. I hope everybody has a great week coming up and blessings to you all.